Good morning, BookTube. Um, you'll notice I'm dressed the same as I was for the previous book tour, uh, shelf tour. It's because I'm doing this one right after because it's my day off. So I probably drop them on different days. Sun all of a sudden is coming out. Here in Vermont, that sometimes means it's going to get cold. Um, in the next few days, we're actually supposed to hit 40 below Fahrenheit. But that's with wind chill. I think it's only 20 below um, the, the, the regular temperature. So uh, that'll get rid of the mosquitoes. We don't have any mosquitoes right now. So anyway, I'm going to pick up on the folio, mostly folio or entirely folio, I believe. Oh, no, there's a couple of Eastern Press. And then this will be the last shelf of that first big bookshelf we've done. Uh, big and wide, but not very tall. Um, <clears throat> we're going to jump right into Robert Graves. And unfortunately, not my favorite for complicated reasons. My phone just went off here. Oh, okay. Um, so here, I'll let you see. This is um, Belisarius, Count Belisarius by Robert Graves, Folio Society. And the problem I have with it is the art. I just... Okay, so it's Robert Graves, Count Melisarius, introduced by Lindsay Davis, illustrated by David Hughes, and I just, the art just didn't work for me. And unfortunately for me, this is, um, <clears throat> excuse me, this is how I first read this book. It's a wonderful size, wonderful print, wonderfully produced. Belisarius, uh, you think of Byzantium and all that. It's just great, great channel. Just the art sometimes matters. So in that case, it didn't work out too good. So, but I usually really like uh, Robert Graves. This next one here I picked up but have not read, and it was excited to find it. It's an older set. Um, here you go. I probably have those out, out of order, but that's just me being me. It's a complete memoirs of George Sherston. That's what it says right there. There you go. And I'll just, I'm not even going to do them in any order. So there by Siegfried Sassoon, um, who I always think of as a World War One. Wow, these are little novels. Uh, like I say, I have not read them. Looking forward to them. Uh, didn't look really interesting. If anybody has read these, like I say, I wasn't going to pass them up. I got them. So it's uh, Folio Society, 1974. So there's memory, memoirs of an infantry officer. And there you have the World War I. Uh, the first one I just showed you is Memoirs of a Fox Hunting Man. And that's 71, 1971. Uh, for the folio. folio. And then a uh, lovely thing here. Is um, Sherston's Progress, uh, London Folio Society, 1974. And let's just give you an example for a date, 1936 on this. So I I don't know much. Uh, I know who Sigurd, Sigurd Sassoon is, and um, I've never read these. I'm not an expert in this part, but I, like I said, I couldn't let it go by because I know it's going to be a new experience. I hope they're good, and, and I hope somebody can tell me about them. So, uh, always always fun when you can find uh, nice additions or something that you uh, look like you might enjoy, but you can take a chance on it because I didn't pay the folio price. I probably paid a couple bucks for that. Then this one here is the same thing. If uh, probably a buck I paid on this, and it was folio, so it caught my eye. And it's such a weird looking thing. It's Bingo Boys and Poodle Fakers, a curious compendium of historic slang collected from the best authorities. Lovely. <laughs> Just fun thing. Uh, um, with decorations by Claire Mackey, London Folio Society, 2007. I like these illustrations, unlike the Count Belisarius one. I actually think the Count Belisarius one, I may have said that already, won awards, so probably just means I don't have a lot of, I, I don't have very adventurous taste maybe, I don't know. So this this is fun. Uh, Bellet, Cautionary Tales, very famous book. This one's got that really, that uh, coarse, gripping type 
fabric on it. Um, this is a well-known, well-known volume. I paid uh, seven dollars and thirty cents for this somewhere. Um, illustrated by Posey uh, Simmons, nineteen ninety-seven, and uh, just. Fun poems. Jim, who ran away from his nurse and was eaten by a lion. Cautionary tale. You don't want to be eaten by a lion. Algernon, who played with a loaded gun and, and on missing his sister, was reprimanded by his father. Was he reprimanded because he missed? Hmm. I love that. The artwork's beautiful. <laughs> so, again, good artwork. <clears throat> this one I have to blame Steve Donahue for um, Rumpole he loves Rumpole and he's talked about it enough on his channel that uh, I feel obligated to read them John Mortimer, Rumpole, selected and introduced by the author illustrations by Paul Cox Folio Sun, uh, Society 1994 and I have read, jumped around in here and read these um Got a great kick out of them. Uh, old Bailey Hack, as Steve would say. So um, this is because of his channel and his stories. And the other one is the Birdie and Worcester, who I told you earlier when I showed the Strand anthology, um, was because of him. Uh, because of his channel. This next thing here is each shelf seems to have to have a big box set. This thing. Now, this one has a good story as a fine goes. I've read some of these. I like mystery stories, but I'm not a fanatic about them, um, like some people are, and which is fun. The um, This was sitting in uh, the Listen that I go to. It's a thrift store, um, and it was marked $5, and I was pretty doggone happy about that. It was, it was <laughs> no question I was getting it. I was just waiting for somebody to come out and change the price on me. Let me see if I can do it like this. A little bit of dust. All right, so we'll start here. So we have uh, the Folio Society, uh, the Folio Treasury of Shorter Crime Fiction, Early Escapades. Uh, so it's volume one. Uh, selected by Tim Held and Sue Bradbury. Illustrated by Nick Hardcastle, who we've already seen in earlier volumes. And so we have uh, The Mystery of Fernwood by Mary E. Braddon. The Professor's Story of the Yellow Mask by Wilkie Collins. The Mystery of Clumber by Arthur uh, uh, Conan Doyle. The Amethyst Box by Anna Catherine Green. And The Seven Hearts uh, by uh, Maurice LeBlanc. This came out in 2007 as, a, as an anthology. Um, let me see what volume here. I'll go in order. Yep, it's volume two. This is um, Superior Sleuths. Um, same group of folks involved. This has uh, Dead Man's Mirror by Agatha Christie. The Gun with Wings by Rex Stout. Call for the Dead by John Le Carre. Um, Quiet as a Nun by Antonia Frazier. And Grace Notes by Sarah Peretsky. Let's see if we can find a, at least one illustration. I do that and I won't find one. Then, uh, let's make sure I get it in the right order here. Yep, police procedures. Again, the same cast of characters putting the book together. And this is... Um, uh, May Gray in the Toy Vig Village by uh, George S uh, Simonon, uh, who I like. I like the May Gray story. He's got a pile of the little penguin paperbacks that I really love. Fit right in the hand. Uh, Bullet in the Ballet by uh, Carolyn Brahms and S.J. Simon. The Terror by Edgar Wallace. Death is Not the End uh, by uh, Ian Rankin. And The Man on the Beach by Henning Mankow. So there's that. And then the final one. Oh, did I show the cover of this? i got to make sure I'm doing that. 
Um, the final one here is uh, Murderous Minds. And again, uh, the same folks putting this together. And this is Double Indemnity by James Kane. Wanted, Someone Innocent by Marguerite Allingham. You'll Never See Me Again by Cornell Woolrich. Piranha to Scurfy by Ruth Rendell. And The Tinderbox by Manette Walters. Oh, just one by something. So, great fun. Uh, $5. Go beat that. Uh, Steve Dunning, who has hung out there with me many times, I think he would have run me over if he'd seen this. I don't think. I know he would have. Uh, things can get competitive once in a while over there. But, uh... Yeah, sitting here with a $5 sticker on it, you know. A week later, it might have had a $100 sticker on it. Who knows? They can be a little, a little uh, odd with their pricing, so. Now, a couple folios. This one, I, at folio, a couple of Eastern Press. This one I absolutely love. And this is the poems of Yates, who is a favorite. With a book, I have a tendency with these uh, book plates to never put them in. Um, I like finding book plates that are already in with somebody else's name on them. Uh, it's always fun to know that there's a story. The poems of W.B. Yeats, selected, edited, and introduced by William York Tyndall, illustrated with drawings by Robin Jocks. Uh, they have this in the 100 Greatest Books Ever Written series, and I absolutely love the artwork and I love the poetry. Little spot illustration there. It's beautiful, beautiful artwork. Um, and like I say, the poetry is just. He would be one of my favorites uh, easily. So lovely volume. One of my one of my treasures. See the little uh, clover there. Then another Irish themed one with Clover and Easton Press. And this is uh, a portrait of the artist as a young man, James Joyce. Beautiful thing. Uh, uh, with an introduction by Hugh Kenner and illustrated by uh, Brian Keogh. Lovely edition of a book I very much enjoyed. I. I'm one of those people who likes Joyce, um, though I will be the first to admit that uh, Finnegan defeated me. But I certainly am not the first person who would tell you that. All right, this one here I picked up and actually got some comments when I did a book haul. I haven't read it yet. Um, I picked this one up really cheap. Um, didn't know about it, didn't know anything about it. And. Uh, Heard some really good comments, so uh, it seems to be one that people really enjoy. Um, and I will get to it. Love the artwork here. Um, so this is Graham Greene travels with my aunt, a novel introduced by John Mortimer, of, who we were just talking about with Rumpole, illustrated by John Holder. Um, and this, I like the artwork. It's beautiful coloring. The colors are just magnificent. Uh, like I say, I like Graham Greene, but I just have never read this. Uh, so I, my understanding is I'm in for a treat. If any of you have read it, drop a comment and then uh, let me know if you liked it, didn't like it, whatever. But I have heard some good things, so it must be must be something to it. This is uh, my son just read this volume uh, for school. Uh, this is uh, To Kill a Mockingbird by Harper Lee. Beautiful thing. Uh, very famous book. Very famous movie. I don't know if Sean D. Stanfast has done one of his book to movie things on this one. I um, have to ask him. It's introduced by Albert French. Illustration uh, by Brewer. Uh, 1996. And A Trial. Uh, young Scout is the character. Uh, uh, just... I don't know. It's one of those books that a lot of people know. So, lights have now. I think two of my two the two oldest kids have used it already. So 
There you go. This one, this is interesting because I actually got this. Fuller used to send you a book when you would buy um, books. I give you a free one. I don't know if they do that anymore. I don't. I don't think so. Maybe they do. And this is just the one they sent me. It was a random thing. Penelope Fitzgerald, The Blue Flower. Um, illustrations by James Alban. And I said, I didn't even know about it. I sat down and read it and really, really liked it. It's about the German romantic um, Novalis. Um, this is a character. Just a fascinating, fascinating story. Um, and was glad to get it. Now I'm glad, now I'm glad I have it. Then here's an old favorite. I'm getting close here, folks. I know these things tend to run a little long. This would well, be nice if I held it up. The, the box on this one's actually nice. They sometimes do that. Now, this is The Wind in the Willows by Kenneth Graham. Doesn't need much introduction by me, right? Just one of my favorites. Absolutely loved it. And I love it in this edition, the end papers. Um, how many of us grew up with this? I came to it late in life. But uh, I still love it. Uh, uh, yeah, Charles Van Sandwick is the illustrator, and obviously Kenneth Graham is the author. This is the second printing from 2006. I have it for the art. I don't have it for first edition type stuff. Just love the story. The artwork just sticks with you. Um has everything. I've reread it I don't know how many times. It's got a little bookmark in there from my last reread. And I'm sure it's many I don't need that anymore. Oh, it's an old library <laughs> card catalog. Not surprising, right? So a beloved volume. Another beloved volume. And a very classic cover on this. And uh, Charlotte's Web. Lovely, lovely story. Uh, right now, I've been dipping in and out of uh, E.B. White's letters. I've had this one for a long time. And then the one I probably read, another box set that I read to my youngest, I don't know how many times. Every night, I gotta have another sip of coffee here, folks. Before it goes cold. It's already starting to go cold. Um, my littlest one just loved these, and we would read and read and read. This Folio Society edition is just lovely. And this is one we use. There's the map. I showed the Latin version of Winnie the Pooh on my Instagram the other day. I ended up giving it to a patron along with a copy of the standard paperback Winnie the Pooh. And the, so she had that in the Latin and then she just got a kick out of it. She's going to go try to read it. The E.H. Shepherd illustrations are the one I love um, as opposed to the, uh, what was it, Walt Disney ones? But it's, it's just, just wonderful. That just, this to me is the memories of reading to my son. So there's uh, Winnie the Pooh. Here's the house at Pooh Corner. Did I show the cover on this? I'll show the both covers right next to each other. Um, so this one's just stuck in my brain from reading so many times. And just, just absolutely loved it it's always happy to to read it and then here's the complete poems of Christopher Robin which uh, we also enjoyed a lot and papers are a little different on that it's not the map my big old shepherd said he's gonna go lay in the hall maybe because uh, he likes the cool floor Cool wooden floors. You gotta be careful how I do this. I do not want to wreck this box. It's got a lot of memories, and we know where this one's gonna go. This will go with my youngest when he moves on. Yeah. 
I am struggling. This happens sometimes. Better to be patient than impatient in this case. And then the final out of the out of that whole bookshelf. Um, and then, like I say, we'll move on soon enough. And this went on long enough. I apologize. This is a Devil's Dictionary. Uh, Ambrose Spears. Nice little marble thing. Um, famous, famous little tongue-in-cheek type. Production. The folio did this one in 2003, introduced by Miles Kington and uh, illustrated by Peter Forrester. So, uh, uh, Habit, a shackle for the free. That gives you the type of, the idea of what sort of, sort of thing. A lot of famous little definitions in here. So, um, uh, dog, a kind of additional or subsidiary deity designed to catch the overflow and surplus of the world's worship. So, there you go. As my dog moves away. So that is it. I thank you, BookTube, and we'll move on and do more of these soon. Thank you.